are going to demonstrate how it is possible to encode accurate 3D information, in this case, into a photograph. But the film plate is actually going to be the surface of this water. When light travels through water, it travels slower. It slows down the speed of light, and that's what we need to do for this to be, to successfully encode 3D information, accurate depth information. We need to slow down the speed of light. And I'm going to turn off this camera light. And as we can see, we have optically charged this three-dimensional statue head. And we're going to submerge it underwater. And when we do that, the, the only light that we're going to capture is the light that's moving in a vertical straight line from the statue head. This is an extremely ingenious and brilliant idea, and we need to give credit to Dr. John Jackson of the Shroud of Turn Research Project for coming up with this. It's brilliant, but this is a way 3D information can be encoded into an image. So right now, let's take this statue head and submerge it in the water. This water has food coloring in it that will also slow down the speed of light. In order to create accurate depth information, we need to slow down the speed of light. And as we explained, in this simple drawing here, the light that's being emitted from this 3D, this three-dimensional head, the light that goes from the tip of the nose to the surface of the water that's a shorter distance. So that's going to be a brighter intensity. And the light that travels has to travel further. By the time it touches the surface of the water, it's a lower intensity light. But what we're going to end up with are shades of light and dark that create the optical illusion of depth accurate to the object. So to recap, number one main points, to create 3D information, you need a 3D object. That object must be separated from the film plate. Number three, the object must be emitting light. Number four, the object must be close to the film plate Number five, the film plate must be flat, straight. And the light, the type of light must be highly ordered and controlled light, like that. So in a way, this is similar to how a hologram would be made, but doing it in a very unique and brilliant way. A very interesting forensic fact is that Human DNA emits a laser-like light, a very highly ordered and controlled light. And when light from DNA is diffracted, it creates holograms. That's observed in science. That's not pseudoscience. That's observed in science. There's the possibility that the light source, that the light that emitted from the body of Jesus to create the accurate depth information may have been from the DNA. And the body emitted this electromagnetic radiation or charged particle radiation while the body was levitated. Image process on the Shroud of Turn is holographic. That's, that's an inescapable forensic fact. The image on a holographic film plate is 50 times thinner than a human hair. We see that same extremely superficial coloring on the image of the shroud. The image on the shroud only penetrates the linen one or two micrometers. That's 50 to 100 times thinner than a strand of hair. The process that created the image that we see on the Shroud of Turin was a holographic process. A 
all right we want to check this 3d sculpture head that was underwater to see if it has accurate depth information like the shroud has same settings here z scale in the middle and we increase the gain by turning this down this increases the depth if the image does not distort and it pops out like that what does that mean it means it has accurate depth information in fact this depth information is so good we could take this turn it to the absolute maximum and do the same with the perspective i mean any image that we put under this hard of a test with the exception of the shroud will utterly distort but the 3d statue head it remains stable this gives us insight into how the depth information was recorded on the shroud linen the 3d object itself was emitting light a uv light ordered and controlled light and the speed of light was slowed down because if not all the light and energy source coming out of the body is going to hit the film plate all at the same time and if that happens you're not going to have depth information the parts that were close to the cloth that light energy hits the linen first and creates the brightest coloration and the parts of the body farther away the light exiting that part of the body hits the film plate last, leaving a lower intensity coloration. And the final result would be, of course, a light intensity distribution image in proportion to the body itself. And in order to create accurate depth information such as we see here, this body could not have been touching the cloth. In order to create distance information, there had to be what? A distance between the body and the cloth. Meaning the body, the man in the shroud, the body of Jesus was not touching the cloth when the image was formed. The depth information, this information was deliberately put here. It was not an accident. It's not, that's, this is not a random, incredible accident. The creator of this image wanted this to be discovered when mankind was reaching the end of the age, the end, the end of the patience of God, basically, where he can't tolerate what he's seeing anymore. And we all know exactly the kind of things that the Lord God is seeing happening in this world right now. This, in my belief, in my opinion, in my, in my conviction, I'm convinced this was done as a warning message. It's a sign, it's the sign of Jonah. Just like the sign of Jonah was a warning, a warning to repent before the destruction of the earth. It's an end times image. A warning sign to repent before it's too late. Give the Lord Jesus a chance.